In this video, we're going to take a look at streams rule checking in CAM350 and DFM Stream. Somewhat confusingly, we named our checklist based analysis streams. It was actually a, a marketing decision to play on our company name downstream. The stream is a checklist, okay? That's where it came from. So if you're wondering why we call it a stream, that's why. But it's essentially a checklist of all the analysis we might want to run against a design. Now I've got a couple windows up here on the screen. The first one is from the options dialog where you can set all the options for CAM 350. And there are some options for streams, um, including some that I'll explain a little bit more as we go through it. You know, how, how close do you zoom into one error or a group of errors? What's the maximum number of errors? We do use uh, multi-threading. Um, so you can change that if you would need to. I've never seen a reason that you needed to change it, but it will use all your CPUs that are available. And obviously, the more powerful your machine, the quicker it's going to run. The one thing I really wanted to point out in here is this default stream file. And what that is, in this case, is our demo stream file, which is based off of a large circuit board manufacturer here in the US. Uh, but it could be your own. You could have your own that you've modified, and you just want that available anytime you load data into CAM350 or DFM Stream. And then you can just immediately go to the uh, streams checklist and run the analysis. You don't have to load it each time. So this is an option, but it's a good option. So that's always available to you. You can always add a different stream, too. So I'm going to get out of the do options dialog. And we're looking at stream zero. I could add another stream, and that's what this first section does. I can copy an existing stream. I can import and export a stream. Okay, that's how I can share it with others. The next section is what analysis is in the stream. So we do a cleanup algorithm, which I highly recommend that you do. It's very important to extract a net list before you uh, run analysis. There's some other things it does to clean up in here. You don't need to do them all, but they certainly will help you limit how many failures you will get that you don't care about. Uh, I won't call them false failures because they are real, but they may be things that you don't care about. Uh, then I've split up my signal air checks into inners and outers, and that's certainly not a requirement, but as you know, IPC even has some different annular ring requirements from inners and outers. Um, I could have just been as simple as just making that one change, but I went ahead and set it up so I can run a full set against the inners and a full set of analysis against the outers. I do have negative planes in here. If there's no negative planes, it just doesn't run. All of these checks are set up to run generically. So if you look at this, our layer filter says outer electrical. So if I'm looking at the one I've titled Outer Electrical, the only thing it's going to run against is Outer Electrical Layers. Now I can change this here in the filtering, and that's what we did for Inner uh, Electrical. So we're running that on Inner Positive Electrical Layers, and the same idea with Solder Mask and so forth. So uh, you can be specific, choose a layer. Uh, you can have a differing, say, Solder Mask check on top side versus bottom side. Completely up to you how you set this up, but the important part is we can save these off and reuse them from design to design. Uh, once again, in this section, you can delete a check, you can duplicate a check. Let's just say you had a BGA area on your outer layers. You might duplicate your outer layer check, do one analysis on the BGA area and another analysis on everywhere else, and that is set up with your areas filter, which I'll go into in just a second. Uh, you can move a check up and down in the checklist. Here are the constraints for the particular check. And the way we do this is we'll show them to you in a spreadsheet mode. And if you want to make a change, you can just simply come over here and choose this. Or you can get it in a matrix mode. And this is easier if you want to run it, uh, uh, make the change on more than one value. You do have decode filtering, layer filtering, area filtering, NC tool, and NC layer filtering. So you can filter things in and out when running analysis. And this helps you be very specific into what you are running analysis on. And the way you would run this is you would just choose run selected. And obviously, uh, we hope to have a 
board outline. If not, we can define one. Uh, that's going to make sure that we don't run analysis on title blocks and things like that. Okay. And that is the streams checklist. And once I run analysis, uh, it will take me down to the Air Explorer and I can walk through the uh, checks or the errors. Uh, and I really don't need the uh, streams window anymore. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Um, I could even move this uh, results tab off to another monitor if I wanted to. But as you can imagine, clicking on an error is going to take you to an error. Clicking on a header and choosing charting is going to show you a chart. Clicking on an error in the chart will highlight all of that particular type of error. And then you have right click options for like validation. If I decide those are okay, I validate them. I'm only left with these analysis here. And as you can see, um, the checkbox was added to all these. I can even hide um, any validated error. So I'm only left with what's the real errors. Okay, and then I'll go through and validate those. Now, one thing I should mention here is because you are taking up a license when you're validating, there might be a better way to do this. And it's actually a pretty good communication tool. So I'm going to save this off to the desktop. And then I'm going to open it up in, in uh, something we call CamView. This is our free database viewer that anybody can download. I'm going to open up that same file that I just saved off to the desktop. And I can actually validate in CamView. So I'm not taking up that streams license. You can see where the, uh, the validation items show in here. Um, if I've added a comment, it'll show, or I could add a comment. Uh, and the nice thing about that is once you do add a comment in here, when I exit, it's going to prompt me to save that, and it will actually save that comment to the database. So if I validate or invalidate or add comments, all those get saved to the database. One more thing I wanted to show you in here is that we've enabled the cross-probing from CamView as well. So while we can cross probe from CAM350 and DFM Stream, you can also cross probe to these tools from CamView. So again, making it easier to validate um, and you don't have to take up a license. And, and while I'm on that topic, just to take that one step further, if I have a dedicated person in my organization for running analysis, they can run analysis, validate what they see, they have questions they can add comments you can send it back to the designer the designer can open it up in cam view not taking a license look at the uh, results answer any comments and if they want to they could even cross probe back to those CAD tools I showed so all of this is available in a free database viewer to me this is much more usable than a text report of errors which we can do by the way but this is a much better way. We're just saving the .cam file and exchanging that back and forth and able to view and validate. But this is Streams RC, Streams Rules Checking in CAM350 and DFM Stream.